Hey guys, now you can follow me on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash ultramaximusreviews. Oh hey, what you supposed to do? Well, that was shocking. Bruh, bump it. Son of a... Hello YouTube, Ultra Maximus back with another toy review, and today we're taking a look at another Spider-Man Homecoming movie figure, and it's the Shocker. Now, this is not in the Marvel Legends line, but in the six-inch movie line that accompanied the film for the summer. And uh, quite frankly, I didn't know that they had made this figure. I came across this at my local Toys R Us, and this is the first time I've ever seen this figure. I've already seen stuff online for it. And uh, the first time and only time I saw this guy in the wild, so I had to pick him up. Let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging. So here we have the Shocker in package, and he's a hefty figure. I definitely like the weight of the figure, and, uh, you know, we don't really see him look like this in the movie. We get two Shockers, spoiler alert, in the movie, and um, I, I was talking to Todd over on my uh, Facebook page, and he pointed out that the two Shockers that we saw in the movie um, in uh, one part of the film, one's got a mask and the other one's got part of the jacket, but we never get to see this full uh, montage um, or costume of the Shocker in the movie. And um, there was, he said, he noticed in one of the early trailers or shots that uh, there was a mask that was similar to this, but it never actually made it into the film. And I'll think, I'm going to have to go back and look at the movie, but I'm, I'm, I'm after talking to him, I'm thinking he's right. And then um, he also noted that he thinks that uh, the Shocker gloves here might be repaints of the Winter Soldier crossbones um, weapons. So that's kind of interesting. I'll have to go and take a look at that. If you know that for a fact, definitely leave a comment down below. Uh, Todd, uh, good points. Uh, definitely some interesting stuff to go back and look at the film for. Now, the packaging is like the other figures that we received out of the film. It's the Spider-Man Homecoming. We get Spidey up there. We get the Shocker right here. We get the image there. There's really nothing else on the package. There's some kind of lines in the package itself there. Back of the packaging. Now, this kind of shows just the Shocker himself. Some of the other figures in the line that you can pick up. And then it's got a little bio of Shocker there and uh, just kind of a close-up. Uh, so there he is, looking all kinds of shockery. And then here are some of the other figures in the wave. Now, I've already taken a look at the Vulture and the Homecoming suit Spider-Man. I did not pick up the other Spider-Man figure. If you want to see reviews on these, I'll add cards to that uh, right here. And then here is uh, the bio. If you want to pause and read that, you are more than welcome to. And that pretty much does it uh, for the Shocker. Let's go ahead and get him out of package and see what we think. And here we have the Shocker out of the package, and I gotta say, I like this figure. I have been pleasantly surprised with the figures from the movie line. Uh, even though they lack articulation, they do not lack detail um, and substance of a toy, and I, I appreciate that. This thing is a heavy little solid chunk of plastic. So it's definitely going to be durable for any kid uh, that you might buy it for. Um, and the sculpt and paintwork, phenomenal for this line. It's just lacking, uh, uh, you know, some articulation. And if it had just, just a little bit more articulation, I'd have zero issues with this figure at all. So, um, you know, like I said earlier, this guy... We don't get a Marvel Legend uh, version of this guy, so if you're looking to complete all the characters from the movie, you're going to have to get this guy in the movie line set because, well, it doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, and going back and look, we, he, we, we don't get this costume, unfortunately. I think this was what, he, what they intended for him to look like, and it just never panned out in the film. Now, as I said earlier as well, um, fellow fan and uh, uh, geek uh, Todd... Uh, he had mentioned that he thought that the um, little weapon pieces, there's his shock arms, were uh, variants from the crossbone figure from uh, Civil War. I'd said, um, I think I'd said uh, Winter Soldier, but actually Civil War is where he's from. And it was in the two-pack Captain America. If 
these are modified versions of those. They're heavily modified because I was going and looking and uh, the straps are way different. Um, the fists are different down underneath and uh, just uh, there were parts up here on the other one missing. I mean, the heavy modifications on the straps. I can see they look similar. Maybe they started with that and did some heavy tooling to change it, but um, they are very, very different. But I do see some similarities, especially with uh, these pistons on the hands themselves. Now, as far as articulation on this figure, it does have some. <laughs> so his head moves left and right like that. He can look down a little bit and look up ever so slightly. There is nothing at the waist, which is a shame. They could have definitely done that. Um, and then uh, his arms move all the way around like that. They do go out like that, so he can do that. That's about it. I wish there was a joint at the elbow um, to get some uh, movement there, but there's not. Or maybe some twistage would be nice. His legs kick up that far. They kick that far back, and that's it as far as articulation goes. Again, I wish he had joints at his knees. I think that would have been nice. So pretty darn limited on um, articulation. And then there's a plug on the back of the figure right here, and I'm not sure what that's for. He doesn't come with anything. And that makes me think that this guy is just a, maybe a retool of some various figures. Maybe it's a complete retool of the crossbones. Um, I don't know, I didn't get the crossbones figure, so I'm not sure, but it's definitely cool looking. It's definitely painted pretty cool. Um, and uh, you know, hey, it's shocker that we didn't get in Marvel Legends. So taking a closer look at the figure itself, uh, the sculpt, really well done on it. I like the updated look for Shocker. It's in the classic comic book colors. Um, he's got the silver paint apps all over, the kind of red jacket with the brown. The goggles look good and the silver on the head. Um, it's got the little pattern, um, kind of check pattern that's in the yellow. It may be kind of hard to see on camera, but it is there, which I do like. And the suit kind of looks like it's made of some kind of um, insulation or insulated type of material, almost like a uh, one of those suits for uh, stunt workers that uh, catch themselves on fire. Uh, which is pretty cool. I kind of wish there was some black washing to bring those lines out a little bit more, and I may do that myself. I'm not really sure, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's really well detailed. He does have this kind of backpack going on back there. Maybe that's to power the um, actual arm pieces, but in the movie, they just powered themselves. And uh, I don't know what that plug in the back is for. If you know what this is, if this is a complete retool of another figure, definitely leave a comment down below. So taking a look at the midsection of the figure, uh, again, the armatures are done really, really well. I like how he's got the little double fists. He's got the one fist and then the pounding shock fist at the end of it. All the hydraulics look good. Lots of nice black wash on it. Uh, very well done. He's got a little side pocket, maybe some extra batteries for the shocking. I don't know. Uh, but the pants done pretty well in um, the dark brown plastic. And we get some stripage going on on the sides, which is really, really good. And, uh, you know, the jacket looks nice. Everything really well done for this scale of figure. And finally, taking a look at the legs of the figure itself. Again, I like the red pinstripes on the pants. I think that looks good. Uh, the boots look really cool. Uh, the front of them are heavily armored. Uh, I like the silver paint. Uh, the black wash over it gives it a nice uh, metal look to them. Detailed very well. And I like how it's the front of the boots that are heavily armored. Um, and we can see the pants coming down the back there. Uh, it looks like he stepped into these um, boots and just uh, it's just a nice big mechanical feel. And I think it's different and uh, interesting and breaks up the monotony of normal Marvel Legends type of figures. Here we have the Shocker standing next to the Vulture uh, from the same line. And as you can see, he's a lot bulkier. He's about the same height as the Vulture. In fact, he might be a little bit taller because the Vulture's standing on little claws there. Um, and I like these two together. I was, like I said, I've been impressed with the uh, basic sense six inch line. And, uh, you know, this definitely is up there with it. It's a fun villain and is a good placeholder uh, to put on your Marvel shelf. 
Now, as uh, far as comparison to a regular uh, Marvel Legends figure, let me bring in Spider-Man so you can kind of see the size comparison. So there is um, Spider-Man, Black Suit Spider-Man. Move Vulture over here and uh, put Spider-Man next to him. So he's he's about a head shorter than Spider-Man, um, but that's okay. He, you know, not all characters are tall. Uh, maybe 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 Shocker's just a short little guy. So well, I mean, it works especially if you're fudging it. You put it in the back of a uh, shelf, uh, maybe standing up on something to kind of give him a little bit more height. But uh, yeah, definitely definitely worth putting into a movie collection. So is the Shocker from Spider-Man Homecoming something that you want in your Marvel collection? Well, if you want to get all the characters from Spider-Man Homecoming, this is going to be a must pick up because they did not make a Marvel Legends version of this guy. And uh, if you're collecting all the six inch movie line figures, you want to get this because, well, it's one of the figures. I think it's got to be the rarest figure in the line because this is the first time I even knew about the figure much less seen it in the store. I've only seen the one uh, at, at Toys R Us. I haven't seen it anywhere else, so I don't know if it's just a drought in Indiana, we didn't get this guy, or if he's just a rare figure. He might be the last one that they put out in the line and they just didn't make a lot of them. I know they do that a lot with toy lines, but it's definitely pretty cool. Um, he potentially has some heavily redone um, armatures from Crossbones from the Civil War uh, two-pack line. Um, if uh, you've got that figure and these look familiar, definitely leave a comment. Let us know down below. Thanks to Todd for pointing that out. Um, you know, it's a shame we didn't see this look in the movie. I would have liked it. Um, I think it's, you know, nice and burly. I like the, um, you know, the costume, very insulated looking. The uh, armor on it and the metal pieces, very well done. Again, very impressed for the six inch line. It just needs a little more articulation. So he's definitely a value at $7.89 uh, and a great addition to put up even on a Marvel Legends shelf. You can fudge it a little bit. He's a little short guy, but that'll work. So there he is, Shocker from Spider-Man Homecoming. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, thumbs it up. If you hate this video, thumbs it down. To watch more Ultra Maximus, click on the links to the right. Don't forget to subscribe and share, like us on Facebook, and look for more videos in the future.